So it's gonna be a second. Well, hello everybody, Merry Christmas. Hi, Chris Tracy, so glad you're with us. Oh my gosh, Chris, are you excited? We are going to be talking to PJ Clark. PJ Clark, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Teresa. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> I am too. PJ wrote a book that is unbelievable for Christmas for presents. You need to get this book. It's PJ Clark's book on uh, Warrior Dance. She's going to be talking about that. And she's in her costume. Where's your sword at? I know you have your sword somewhere. I have <laughs> my sword just in case we need it today. Yes. <laughs> oh, come on. That's so deal. cool. <laughs> Is the real deal this sword is the real deal this is the sword of the spirit um every every time that we go into battle in a spiritual place we take the sword of the spirit we take the word of god uh, and we can be a warrior in so many different ways we can be a warrior through like what david did when he would write his psalms and use poetry which you have in your book or we can do it through dance or we can do it through art. There's so many different creative ways that we can position ourselves to, to really go after the presence of God and to fight against the enemy and to be victorious. And so welcome, welcome, welcome. And guys, if you're out there and you want to know more from PJ, we love to hear about where you're from, your name. And then also in the chat, put down uh, how has how has creativity helped you to grow? And we're going after this thing of also feeling overwhelmed as a writer, as a dancer, as a creative in so many different ways. We can feel overwhelmed, like especially when we look at this year, you know, 2022 is closing. Like, have I really accomplished? Have I really I pursued the things that I've wanted to pursue. And it can be overwhelming to start to write, to start to do these things. And that's why we have a focus group following for writing, which we'll talk about in uh, in just a, in, a, in a minute. But before we do that, if you guys feel like, I want to know how I can learn to create with God. I want to know my creative identity. We have an Ignite conference coming up. And PJ is going to be like one of our speakers. So is Chris Tracy. And again, these are going to be workshops that will help you grow. But I'm going to share my screen so that we can hear about this incredible opportunity. It is January the 28th, which is coming. It's just right around the corner, guys. And um, let me just go to full screen. And so you guys can see it. Okay, and let me go back up here. So it is, it's knowing how to discover your God-given creative design and destiny, fueling passion to create change in ourselves, in our community, and the world. Woo! January 28th is 8 to 5. It's online, so wherever you are, you can come. Here's our main speakers. So Dan McCollum is a lead forerunner in the prophetic movement worldwide. We have Kevin, myself. Tanasha LeRae, which is a spoken word artist, but also she writes plays, all different kinds of stuff, both in the church and in the marketplace. Chris Lemery is a man who's touching tons of businesses through creativity and joy. Brian Peterson has done murals all over the planet, and he's going to talk about how he is touching so many people through his creative expression. And Ann Ballard is involved in fashion. And I'll be speaking about her tomorrow at 1230 and, and really showing who she is. Plus, you guys get after that, you guys get these different workshops. All of this is on TeresaDedman.com slash Ignite. So you can read about every workshop. There's there's again, there's 14 different workshops for you guys to choose from. You choose two during that day, but the rest are sent to you. And PJ here, she's doing a special workshop. And it's on Warrior Dance with Cameron at Cunningham, who's leader of an incredible dance ministry called Reverent Rhythms. Um, they're going to share their vision for dance, how you can grow in the community, the nation, and internationally through this, and they will help activate you. Um, PJ, share about what you're excited about 
in, for this conference. I want to hear. Yes, I'm, I'm excited just you sharing about all the speakers you're having. And I really am looking forward to having uh, the time. And I feel honored that you're having myself and Cameron. She'll just be getting back from Africa where she'll be ministering. And that's one of the main things we want to talk about is the uh, using dance and the arts for evangelism. And you do that, Teresa. You know, you teach that in your Create Academy. And it's such a natural, organic way to reach out to people that don't know the Lord. Like you've said, the arts cross all lines of uh, culture, language, religion, um, everything. And that's what amazes me about the arts. And, and that's what you're using. I mean, it's touching all those mountains, too. You know, you talked about the business, the arts and entertainment you know, music, in uh, what you bring through your Create Academy and so many things, the prophetic, it's happening. And God's taking back those mountains through the arts and creativity. So I'm so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> I am too. And Chris, you're doing one on writing. What are you excited about? Well, I'm just excited to meet with writers. I always am. And I'm just really hoping that a lot of people will come. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing a workshop. I'm a writing coach. And I'm actually partnering with, with my writing coach, um, Don Milam. We're doing this together. He's an amazing uh, coach that has coached some of my favorite writers. And uh, we're going to be talking about how to, how to bring the presence of God into our writing, how to host his presence, and how to overcome uh, such things as imposter sy syndrome and being overwhelmed in our writing and how to, to keep at it. So, uh, and how to use the right word. And we'll have tips on writing in there. So it'll, it'll just be great. It's going to be amazing, guys. And we have people from every creative expression. The great thing about this conference is it doesn't matter how old you are. Even like teenagers should come to this. Everybody should come to it. It doesn't matter your background. We want you to grow in your identity. And that's super, super important. So you don't have to have any experience in any creative expression. We want people that have a hard to change culture and really have a heart to find out who they are just to come receive, be blessed, and then see what God can do. So go to TeresaDebman.com slash Ignite to learn more. And I want to see you there. Oh, I, we forgot to mention too, we have two prophetic sessions, one from eight to nine to so an hour long with my team helping you and prophesying over you to help you grow or from four to five. Yeah. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> and you can double dip. You can go to both. So check it out. And it's going to change your life. The other thing that we do, which we feel so strongly about in create Academy, my online, um, my online uh, support system for you. If you love to create, if you want to create, give a gift, give a gift to the ignite conference, give yourself a gift and join create Academy with a monthly subscription because God is growing us up to be community. There is nothing that can happen, guys, without community. You will hear it today. With, there's nothing that will ever happen in our lives without that. That's why we have a focus group coming up. And that focus group starts at 10.15. So 15 minutes after we're done from 9 to 10 Pacific Standard Time, Chris Tracy is going to coach you on your dreams to write. And so we're going to give you a, a Zoom link at the end, but share a testimony about what happened uh, last month and what God's doing in the writer's focus group. Well, there's so much happening in Create Academy with writers, and it's my great pleasure to be part of that. So, um, But last month, we had David Pennington, who's one of our leaders, and he's from uh, the UK. He just released his amazing children's book. And he uh, was our guest speaker during the focus group, the writing group that's right after this. And uh, so people were able to ask him questions and he was able to release. I mean, there was, you know, Revelation 1910 says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. There was something like that happening within our group where when he released who he was, his challenges around writing, how it was to write a children's book and how you too can, like a whole lot of people in the group started writing their own ideas of what they could write for children. And uh, it was just an amazing thing. It was like a virus, but a good virus that just spread through the book since then now. Um, and because of the, the writers groups we've had all along and the people that are members of Create Academy that are being inspired, this month, 
Um, one of our group members, Patricia Webb, just released her amazing new devotional. It's, it's available now on um, Amazon.com. And Lori Dobbins, who's been a, who's one of our leaders in Creative Academy, is 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 in the process of publishing her children's book that we've all been right waiting up for, and she's always a part of the group. We're just so excited that people are being inspired, and not only inspired to write, but also inspired to share with each other, and even potentially publish. So there's resources available in that group to help you on your way. Now th this is through Create Academy, so this is through. Uh, so you would have a Facebook group with writing so you could share every every time you wrote whatever. But what's cool, guys, is we want to give you a free Zoom link today so that you could just talk to Chris Tracy. You could see um, talk to PJ and you could get what you need. We do have some shout outs, though. So Peyton from Redding, California. Yay, Peyton. Uh, Mila from Massachusetts. Mila. Yay. She's part of my Create Academy. Any questions you can ask? in the chat with her. Marinda uh, Stephens from England. Woohoo! Yeah, David Pennington is from the UK, the one who just wrote his children's book too. Janine Thetard, welcome from South Africa. Janine, it's always good to have you on. Annette Paulson from Norway. Annette, we're so glad that you are with us. Patch from Denver. Woo, Colorado, come on. This is awesome. Kelly Krogman, Sten Steindorf is here from San Diego. Oh my gosh, so glad you're with me. Um, this is so cool. I love God. He is so good, everybody. Are you excited? So we're going to get into, again, this whole entire interview is about PJ and about her story of writing her book. So PJ, tell us why you wrote the book Warrior Dance. Tell us a little bit of and I've read it. I love it. Um, why and how it would benefit other people. So go ahead, just share your heart. And if you have any questions for her, just put that in the chat. Go for it. Yes. Okay. And before I forget, I just want to say that Teresa wrote the foreword to my book. So I'm so honored and thankful. And she is the one really that inspired me in so many ways. I said so much of hers in my book. Chris Tracy, same thing. But um, it really kind of started, my mom was a writer. And <clears throat> I remember, this was probably 10 years ago, I told my daughter, I said, we cannot let, she, she didn't get to the publishing point. She kept submitting her writing and she, and she just couldn't break through the wall. You know? And so I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that. And so I told my daughter, I said, we've got to break through because she has a daughter. And so I said, I break through, you'll break through. Cora will break through, <laughs> brings me to tears just about. And so I feel I've broken the barrier. And that was one reason I wanted to uh, complete the process of writing a book. It started with my mom. And then of course, God has those divine connections. He connected me to Chris Tracy. Um, again, that was like uh, the same time period and it started turning in me. And she's really all about tell your story. And I have a redemptive story. And of course, it's warrior dance from darkness to glory. And so that dark part of my life that God redeemed and, and shined his beautiful, glorious light onto the path to set me free. And so that is part of the other reason I wrote it. And then thirdly, and Teresa, you're so good at this. And of course, Chris, with the writing, he gave me a voice, you know, through writing, he gives us a voice through our art. It doesn't have to necessarily be the verbal voice, but you write, you do your art, you do your music. That is your voice in the world. And the world needs our, our voice today. And it needs a, and we need that warrior voice. And that's what this is about, you know, calling out the warrior, awakening the warrior within. Because we all have that, you know, those moments we're watching a movie or we read something or we, you know, look at Teresa's painting and something stirs in us to rise up and be that warrior. And so that's what we want to do today is just call that out. I've had it called out of me. I've hid behind the door at times, literally in my story, I tell about it because I was afraid. And then God said, come out from behind the door, come out from the the hiding and then the darkness and the insecurities and I'll show you the way. And so it's so exciting to see um, it come to fruition through this book. So thank you. Oh, I love it. I, I just want to, and I'm Chris, I'm going to have you share on this too. 
I think like, I think that there's something within all of us that, that we have to, in a sense, we have to listen to, it's like a listening. We have to listen to uh, something that calls to us. And it's not only God, but it's our own spirit saying, uh, share your story. Or it, it's this thing of, if you don't, if you don't share it, then no one else will, will hear it. And, you know, my book, Born to Create, I talk about like, you have a unique calling that if you do not express it, then we're going to, we're not going to know a part of who Jesus is because you were afraid because you hid, you hid the light underneath that bushel, like it says in scripture. And there's something happens when you just go, okay, I'm going to share. Now that could be as simple guys as joining Create Academy or joining the focus group and sharing about a simple paragraph that you just wrote. It, it doesn't have to be done. It doesn't have to be this thing where all of a sudden you have the first, the first chapter to the end chapter and you have it all in your head. It starts with these little sparks. Like we do 40 day challenges, et cetera, in Create Academy with my leaders. And in that time period, that's really one of the reasons why I wrote my book, uh, Created to Overcome, were these 40 day challenges of just doing poetry every day. And that there's something about that, that, that being in a community helps you to go, okay, I'm going to share, I'm scared to death, but I'm going to share. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden people go, oh my gosh, that was amazing. This, I see this, I see that because other people can help you to grow. And I think of Lori Dobbins, Chris Tracy. I think of her book that she's, that Ollie, what she's just finishing up. I think of David Pennington and his kids writing the book with him. I think about these things like it was only in community that these things happen, like what you're talking about, PJ, where we really, we really listen to that voice. But, uh, but Chris, share about, because you've helped walk PJ through this, Share about what you have seen PJ um, do and how other people can learn from that. Uh, you know, I, PJ and I met the first time probably about 12, 12 years ago, I think, in a coffee shop. She was working there and I was writing there. And I used to have a writer's group there. And we, we've become very good friends, very close friends for, ever since. And um, I, I've seen her grow. I've been through some of her times of, of darkness and light. And um, I know her story and I know her heart. And, you know, I've worked at, every writer I work with has a story like that. We can't go, get through this life without having some rocky times. And our, our overcoming of those rocky times are, are what our story is. And our story is our story. It's like Bill Johnson says, um, he's one of my favorite writers and pastors. He says, if we only knew who we were, we would never want to be anybody else. God made us so special and he gave us our story, our life. He knew what we could take and what he could bring us through and then what we would release. And if we are just holding his hand, like in that picture behind you, Teresa, and yeah. walking through this life with him, he's going to show us and compel us to share it in some way creatively. We're made in his image. He's a creator of the universe. We're called to be creative. How are we going to release that and help other people? And that's just basically what I felt like my life was about is, is to help other people do that. And um, yeah. I've written my own books and blogs, but I, my, my great joy is to help others find that story within themselves and then share it. Absolutely. I, I feel the same way. I feel like that is one of my favorite things that I, I love in and we don't understand how God has wired us to hear the good news. I, I think about all three of us here, how much in the culture. And, you know, one of the things that that Chris was involved in was really telling the news. But now when we look at the news, it's so dark. It's not even trustworthy in so many different respects. Right. Right. And so and so where do you get hope? Where do you gain the understanding of, of who you are, uh, like with Bill Johnson, like, I love that quote. It's like, it happens as we, as creatives inspire others by our art, our dance, our music, our writing to think of God's, um, economy in the kingdom of God, and then bring that down. I, it's just crazy. I was 
at the boat parade just last uh, last Friday in Dana Point, which is in Southern California. So they have boats. Instead of going to homes, they have boats that go around with lights and music, et cetera. And I'm and so I'm I'm there, and this woman says, "Hey, hi, Teresa." And it was a person who has followed me and and like has been in our church, whatever. And so we start to strike up this conversation. As we're leaving, this woman turns to my husband Kevin and goes, "Is is she a, is she an artist, a famous artist?" Because I follow a person named Teresa Deadman. I'm not sure if that is that her on Facebook. I'm an artist too. And, and yeah, I was able to pray with her, prophesy over her. But what I'm saying, guys, is you don't know when you write that blog, you don't know who it's going to touch. You don't know when you are sharing in social media and a person is depressed or is going through a difficult time, how what you speak is going to transform them. There's just something that we have in this culture of, of going after God's heart that just is changing people's lives. It's just so good. And we have more people coming on. If you have any questions for PJ, let us know. LaVonda from Germany. Hey, LaVonda. It's so good to have you on. Uh, Philip Sidamala from uh, King's Church in India. Welcome. We're so glad that you're on. This is so fun. Patricia Webb. Patricia, yay, we all know you from Spring, Springfield, Missouri. She's on. Lisa Hendrickson from Nebraska. Andrea Z, hey, you were, she lives in Oxnard and she was where I was at with Revive Education last Saturday. Woo, with Cheon. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so glad we're all on together. She's a great artist and you're our writer too, Andrea. It's so good to see everybody on. I am just excited. We're just having fun. If you have any questions again for PJ or for Chris, let us know. Uh, we're going to move on. Uh, so, you know, one of these things that we are talking about in this Christmas season, but also for the month of December, some of us as creatives can feel overwhelmed. Uh, how many of you have felt that way? Like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? How is it going to work out? Uh, those kinds of things. So PJ, share about how you oh, how you wrote this book and those feelings of overwhelmingness. How did you overcome them? What was your process in that? Yes, well, um, one of them was just getting the process going. You know, Chris, like she shared, uh, she uh, came to me. She had just started with a new publishing group, and they did these awakening uh, weekends. So she and I. She basically interviewed me and then wrote an outline out of that about my life. So that really helped. And uh, then, but then you just get kind of stuck. And I, I, we just kind of sat there for a while. And then uh, what I had to do, and this was some, this is the hard part, but Teresa already talked about it is really, I had Chris, I needed to sit down and write and have a reason to write, know my why I'm writing, have a deadline of my writing. You know, it all had to, because that's the hard thing. Everybody knows, like Teresa just said, we get overwhelmed. Things come up in life. There's always going to be something distracting, pulling, um, especially when the enemy knows you're going to write your story and it's going to make a difference with others. So there's so many obstacles and walls you got to push through. And the huge thing for me was that community. You know, so once I had uh, Chris, we had that interview. Then she introduced me to Jeremy with, I'll give a shout out to him with Throne Publishing. And so I invested in myself because I thought this isn't going to happen. It's been two years, right, Chris? I mean, that we started it. Then we uh, had the, we, we both, she and I committed to going to this cabin and we're only going to write. We're very good friends and we want to talk and have coffee and go on walks. But <laughs> we, we set little periods of time where we could uh, get refreshed, but we, we spent hours and we, and it was hard. I, one time I told her, I can't write about this. This is my dark part of my life. It was so hard, you know, and you get to that place, but we pushed through it because we knew God's redemptive light was going to, would shine through. So once we just wrote, I think one of the things that people do, they want to edit it and fix it. No, you got to write and not edit. You got to sit down, do the work, do the writing, and then come back for the editing. And it's going to be kind of a mess, but at least you're getting your story out there. 
So that was huge. And then uh, lastly was the, the finish line. I mean, I, I started really in January, I had this kind of mess, you know, a lot of writing and pieces, and I had to commit because I really had a deadline. And at that point, um, I was coming down after my time with Throne Publishing, you know, I was, I had a month where it needed to be done. <laughs> so, so that was what Jeremy told us. It was like a marathon. You know, if you've ever run, run a marathon, had a baby, there's all sorts of analogies, but he used the marathon. You hit, there's a wall there and some runners stop there and they don't finish the race. Some push beyond the wall, but then they get tired and they don't know the end is in sight. So they stop. And then thirdly, those runners that know there's the wall and you've got to push through it and you've got to go to the end. It's not going to be easy, but they know. And so they finish the race. So I really, I hit the wall. I hit, I had a free, a few uh, premature births. You know, I thought I was done and it wasn't. And, and my pregnancy with the, this book went on and on, you know, so it, it comes to that place where you you got to finish the work and you've got a team. I had editors, I had content people that helped cheer me on to help slash out 10,000 words of my book, you guys. I had 10,000. <laughs> so, you know, it is a it I had to be that warrior to get it done. It really everything in me had to rise up and yep. And thank goodness my husband stuck by my side. <laughs> Come on, good thing, huh? And we need yeah. our husbands. We need our we need our friends. Uh, share a testimony that happened because you wrote your book. I we want to hear a good testimony. If you have a couple, that's great too. Yes. Well, um, I want to just share. You know, it's not really for like eighteen and under. You know, maybe a mature sixteen year old, but. Um, I have uh, Abby, who's with Reverend Rhythms. I wanted different age groups. So she gave a testimony and she was precious. She was at my book launch and she shared. And um, I'll just read it for, for you because what she said was really awesome. And she's a, she's 24. So Abby, thank you for, she read my book. She gave me a testimony and then she get, stood up and spoke. Um, let's see, I've got to find it here. I'm sorry I had it pegged here and now I'm looking for it. But uh, so I had several and then I had a friend of mine right in there. There we go. Uh, so Abby said, there we are. Have you ever felt unseen, disassociated from your destiny and calling and you don't know where to start? Look no further. PJ Clark in the warrior dance gives you steps and tools to reconnect, reconcile and reclaim your destiny and re reignite your desires. Where you feel undesirable, God has given PJ the tools and knowledge to empower you to move from the darkness into the light and step into your calling as a child of God. May you be blessed with the knowledge and grace that flows from warrior dance. So that was from Abigail. And then uh, Angie, she wrote, uh, she said that I wrote with deep thought provoking story that through her transparent and vulnerable journey, she shares her difficult and dark moments. She writes how God met her each step of the way, how he rescued her and led her and opened her healing through the word, through his word, through her gift of the arts, God empowered her to understand his warrior spirit, her passion and inspiring, challenging and moving, not to read, it's not a rush through book, it will encourage and challenge you. So get beneath the surface of your life and dig deep into the belief system and realize and walk in your power and authority to emerge as a mighty warrior of God. So come yay. on. Yes. Yay, Jesus. <laughs> come on. I I love this. I, I love this thing of the process. And Chris, I'll ask you about this too. But the, the process of of writing, it's it's like it is. It's like uh having a baby, <clears throat> you know, for Peyton out there who's pregnant. It's like it's that thing of, okay, is it really going to happen? Oh, I really need to get the the car seat. I really need to, hmm, I, I need to change the way I eat or whatever. There's there's so many things that happen because you're thinking of the baby besides yourself. And that's what that's what happens when you write a book. You have to think about the audience. You have to think about so many other factors that um, great experienced coaches can help you with word count, uh, word, what needs to happen first, what needs to happen in the middle, what needs to happen at the end. There's, there's, there's such a, uh, 
a, a way to to see this thing emerge but having a community of people mm -hmm. to help you when you feel alone or overwhelmed is so key so chris what about you what share a little bit about the process for you in helping to coach writers well the, <clears throat> excuse me um there's different levels of coaching uh, from simple writers group like we do in the focus writing with create academy to be to actually one-on-one -on -one type of coaching and every writer comes to me with a different set of um excitement and fears and wondering if they can actually get this thing done and not knowing where to start. And so the, the process of coaching will help help to guide you through that, to help you develop a, a picture of your book, a map of your book or an outline to get you started, um, to draw out who you are and what your story is. And we can do that in ways like we did with, with PJ, uh, with you know just interviewing her. But I really encourage writers to to do this process themselves and I guide them through it so they can do each step and own each step and tell their story in their own writing. And, uh, and then at the, at, at the end of that, if they need help with their writing, there's much help with the team that you put around you as far as, um, you know, content editor, which is something I do, also copy editing, also um, just the different people that lay out and they can make recommendations on how your book is well presented, which PJ's book is, and your book too, um, Teresa, Created to Overcome, both your books have some very interesting formatting in them and very beautiful um, art, you know, and covers and everything. So there's so many things, so many parts of a book and it's very exciting to go through the process. And it is like birthing a baby. It becomes your baby. You know, this, these are two PJ's two books here that I've helped with both of, both of them. <laughs> this is her art of art and soul of journaling, and then I've got my books and so many other books uh, that people that I've helped people with. Um, they become your baby, <clears throat> and then there's a fearful time going. I'm an imposter. I really don't know what I'm talking about. Did I really do this? Um, <laughs> is it really going to help people? Can I really release this? If I release it, is it going to hurt others? Um, how, how, you know, like, how can I really let this go? There's so, so, I'm, and I'm, you know, you feel like you, somebody else could tell the story better than you, but that's not true. Those are all lies from the enemy that come in and try to defeat you and derail you. And, and just like what PJ was saying about that, we have to silence those lies and begin to declare over our book that we are the only ones to tell the story the way we're, the way we experienced it. And God has given us this. He's compelled our hearts to write it. If he's, if you're compelled to write. Um, and if so, then you just begin. You just yeah. have to begin. And so I help yes. people begin. <laughs> oh, you do. You do such a great job. And, and that I'm going to, that leads into so much. Teresa Innett Paulson, I'm so grateful for you guys. This is so cool. Um, you're like cheerleading group across the nation. Thank you. Uh, Teresa. Annette Paulson, thank you so much. Lorraine Otto, I must get your book. Woo, yes, you do, Lorraine. Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, Mila says, wow, love how God meets every person who moves through where they receive healing and freedom through writing. It's so true. I love that. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to take you guys because I think we're ready for that. We're going to go on an encounter because part of this process is like, yeah, I'll give you an example. Like I, I have my book here, you know, um, created to overcome. So I have my book. You have your book. Uh, we all have our books. You just showed it to us. We all have our book, but, but I had to take ownership for this book. I, I, I had to kind of like go, okay, I have something to share that no one else can. I'm going to do it. I, I don't care what happens. I've just got to do it. Right. And then it began that journey. Um, but now it's time for you to take ownership of what God's called you to, to do. And so we're going to go on an encounter and it's going to be fun. Again, I want you guys just out there to take a moment. This is not going to be long, a moment just to center upon the Lord. And we're going to have you close your eyes. I'm going to take you on a journey because sometimes our hearts are so scared that we can't hear. And so we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to show us what is what is lurking there that we need to take ownership of 
And uh, then we are going to um, write a letter to God about what he showed us. So it's going to be fun. This is a writing exercise that that you will really enjoy uh, because sometimes we need to listen to our heart and listen to God's heart for us. So go ahead, close your eyes. If you're driving, don't close your eyes, but everybody else, close your eyes. Um, Father, we are, are so grateful for Matthew 7 that that when we we come before you, you don't give us a stone, but you give us the desire to give us a good gift, a gift that would supply the needs that we have. And, and God, there's something that has been stirring today. I could feel it in, in every heart that's listening right now. And we'll listen to this, to this wonderful YouTube, uh, wonderful create talk right now, God, as far as what it is that we love to, 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 to communicate and how. And so father, I just release upon each person here, the ability to hear their heart. So I command fear to go. I command any lie to go that somehow you're not worthy. You don't deserve it. Or you, you feel ashamed about even thinking about it and Holy spirit show them what they're supposed to create. You might see something as far as art, dance or writing something that God has called you to do. We're going to center on writing today. Is there something that the Holy Spirit's wanting you to write or start to write about? And we're just going to let some silence happen. And I want you to listen to his heart and your heart. So ready, set, go. And then I want you to say this, we're all muted uh, out loud if, if you are alone or, or just say it in your heart, if you have people around, say, Papa God, will you help me? Thank you, Father. And Papa God, I pray that you would align everyone with not only ownership to put their signature in that, in that book, in that writing, the blog, whatever it is that they feel called to. But I pray, Father, that you would show them the people that will be touched because they decide to do the work that you're calling them to. And I pray for the community and for the people around them that will help them in that process. In Jesus' name, amen. You can open up your eyes. Woo! That's so good. We don't partner with fear. We partner with faith. And so now what I want you to do, we're just going to take a moment, about five minutes, and I want you to write a letter to God about what he shared with you. And what it is that you really want to do. And so, again, this is between you and the Lord. I want you to write and say, dear, dear Papa God or, or Jesus, whatever you want to do, this is my desire. And then tell him. So we're going to do the same thing, both Chris, Tracy and I and PJ, because there's more books in us. So go ahead, take a moment and write that now. And we'll time it and you guys have five minutes to write. Go ahead.
You have one more minute left. Okay, I'm going to call you back and we're going to take a risk right now. All of us here are going to read what we wrote in our letter to God, but we also want to help you to take risks because the more that you declare it, the more you own it. So in the chat, write down what you wrote to God. We would love, love, love to hear it. And then Mila will send it to me in text form. And we will share it. So again, if you, God spoke to you, take ownership, declare it. And uh, we would like to pray for you at the very end and see you grow. And then you can discuss this in our focus group coming up shortly. So uh, again, Mila, go ahead, put that in the chat. And Chris, Tracy, what did you write? Well, when we had the encounter, I, I just saw God making baking a cake with me or making a big pot of soup. So that's what what this is coming from. <laughs> I said, Dear God, how can I take all I've written and make soup? Which ingredients stories do I add? What flavors will enhance it? What meat would be best to nourish it? How long should I cook it? Who will read it? Or eat it? Why am I making it? Will you cook with me? Will you help me make it a dessert? Make it make a dessert. Will the creation bring will this creation bring comfort and joy? Healing like soup to the flu, warmth to the chilled and desolate places. Can I be the writer you see in me? Let the soup of a book bring blessing to not only others, not only you, but to me too. For when I write, I find healing and can make sense of my life. Love, Chris. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. That's a great recipe for like the things that you're doing through what you're writing and putting it all together. I love that. That is so powerful. What an amazing analogy. You know, my husband, Kevin, he would love that. He's a foodie. So and that's so good. Um, uh, PJ, what did you write? Okay. It, yes. And mine is coming from um, just being in that place of that we talked about earlier you know, putting that baby out into letting people hold my new baby and what they'll think and, you know, that vulnerability. So, uh, Father God, I thank you that you called me out from behind the door of shame to come into your light. I don't have to be afraid. I trust you to get my story into the hands of the right people. I receive your blessing, your grace, your redemptive power to flow from the battlefields of my life to the vistas of victor victory and overcoming in my flesh, the world and the enemy, and to become all that you created me to be. Thank you for crowning me as your daughter and giving me your sword of the spirit. I felt like he knighted me, you know, like you do with little children with the balloons, you know, he yes. put a crown on my head and he gave me that sword and um, as your warrior daughter. Woo! Oh my gosh, I love that. That is so powerful. Wow. I, I felt like the Lord, when you said that, like the Lord is just giving you a chance to be in that place of royalty with him and value and to see how this book is going to transform others. That is just huge. Wow. Well, guys, um, you know, one of the things that, that I love, oh, here, and there's some poem, uh, there's some people that have shared already, but for me, uh, we'll share in that second. I, I kept hearing this thing and it was really awakened when I was with Cheyenne at the Revive Education about the need for children to know their identity it was such a huge, uh, I would say it was like in the balance, like this one painting I did of, of a swing, it says in the balance and, and children can be swung one way to believe one way and come back the other and believe that, uh, and it can either be like the Lord, or it can be of uh, the culture saying who they are. And I feel like the Lord said, Teresa, they're in the balance. What are you going to say? So, um, so this is the letter that I wrote, uh, dear Papa God, 
I declare that I will write children's books and educational books for educators that will bring families together and affirm truth and identity in children's lives. May it bring hope and break off gender dysphoria and cause a mighty revolution. I declare create to be free books for children to go viral in our culture and change the way that they think. Mm -hmm. So that was for me, um, it's a tall order, but I feel like I need to do that. So that's part of um, what the Lord spoke to me. And, but we have some incredible, like one people that have taken ownership. Uh, Lisa Hendrickson is also joining us, but this is Andrea, Andrea Z from Oxnard. Andrea said, um, I would like to complete a poem painting book with either uh, one or two or more poems, starting with the one you helped me write on Saturday night, the prophetic point cited with my poem and paintings. Yes, that would be awesome, Lorraine. We're so, I mean, um, Andrew, that is so amazing. We say yes to that. Oh, woo. And Lorraine Otto says, I wrote Father God, you know my heart, and I would love to write books for children to get to know who you are and have a relationship with you and grow in the knowing his or her identity. Sounds like what I'm doing. That's awesome. Very, very similar. I love this. Uh, and they're walking and to walk in their authority. Thank you, Lorraine. And we will help you with that in our focus group. Lorenzo, Lorenzo, how are you doing? Uh, Papa God, you called me to write stories that capture your way of making it safe for people. Hold on, it just jumped for, uh, for people to approach their true identities, their story. Lorenzo is an incredible uh, person who writes uh, for um, different dramas as well. Lorenzo, I love that. Continue that. Share what you're writing. We can encourage one another. Therese uh, Ar Annette Paulson, I wrote mine in Norwegian. But basically something like this. Thank you, Papa God, for helping me write the books you put upon my heart. Thank you that I don't need to know everything at once. Woo, that's revelation. You'll bring me what I need. Thanks for not rushing me, but guiding me. I just had a sense of rest throughout the whole session, which is profound to me. Come on, Jesus. That is so awesome. Mila, I saw my journey. So I wrote, Papa God, I have a place. I, I place this desire for writing a blog about my journey uh, on how I pressed into your depths and discovered more of you on this journey. Yes, Mila, you need to write your story. Uh, Patricia Humphrey Webb, I want to write about how God helped me overcome shame without writing all about the abuse and giving glory to the enemy. The Lord showed me that I could write about the, so the soil, the roots, the lies. And the fruit, the shame, worthlessness, etc. Then write about the truth, changing all those areas with, with new, uh, with new fruit of feeling loved, wanted, and valued. Yes, this is, all came to me during the encounter. Wow, woo, Patricia, come on! I sense a new book, Lorenzo. I will combine visual, sound, words, movement, and color in picturing freedom. Yes, you will, Lorenzo. That's what you do in your, your acting, your plays, things like that. You can incorporate all of the acting, the dancing, every part of creativity within that. I'm just getting inspired. Uh, Chris, Tracy, what do you think about all this? Oh, I just love hearing all of it. It's just, just proof how God speaks to us so uniquely, so differently, and so creatively. And, you know, um, we were talking about this earlier today, but I just feel like, you know, when we write, we also, we also cook, but we paint and we, we we're, we're, we're writing and painting, we're painting and cooking words. So we're just combining them. It's such a creative act. And it's so beautiful. Poetry comes from it. Songs come from it. Drama comes from it. There's so many different kinds of writing. And, uh, and I love how we can also combine now with all the different publishing tools there are, combine our art with our writing so we can you know add poetry in there we can do bullet points we can um we can put our art like a painting in there and we can do qr codes that can take people readers deeper into who we are and like we can share our websites and there's so much that we can do around putting a ministry around our book and using our book as a tool to reach so many people 
So I'm really, really yeah. excited. And it's not just about books. I mean, you guys, there's blogs out there and there's, you know, poetry that you can give to a friend in the coffee shop. I mean, this blesses me just hearing you share your ideas in this forum. You have no idea how it blesses people just to hear you share ideas. So yeah, and, and guys out there, like I, part of part of the journey of what we are seeing in Create Academy and what I am seeing around the globe is it just takes one person having courage and then others will follow. It's it's not about being perfect. I love that the part that, that you talked about of not rushing, but really just letting it marinate. I love that part that it's not about us like trying to like, you know, it's like what you talked about, uh, Chris, with the with the soup. It's like, okay, we can throw in the ingredients, but the heat has to happen, which is the Holy Spirit, to marinate it together. And so this this isn't about us trying to strive. This is about us seeing the presence of God come and just taking steps every day to be faithful. So super important. I love that. Uh, what about you, PJ? What did you think of all that was shared? Oh, my goodness. It's exciting. I mean, to see that breakthrough and people coming out from behind, you know, like in your painting, coming and taking the hand of the Lord and and taking those steps. Um, and it, like you said, Teresa, it could just be a paragraph. It could be a poem. Um, it could be something very simple that you start, just start, like Chris said, and um, the process. God will give those divine connections, the, the dots, connect the dots and get you to the right people and just start the process and he will show you the way. I love it. Well, well, Chris, we're going to start at 1015, the, the forum, uh, the focus group. And I'm going to have Mila put in the chat again. If you want to learn more about how to get this book, there's two different ways. So that's going to be in the chat. So if you want to get her new book, PJ's new book, um, there's there's different ways that you can get that. So that will be in the chat. And then also, if you wanted to join the Create Focus Group at 1015, we're going to put that Zoom link for free in the chat. And Chris, what are you going to what are you guys going to be doing on the focus group? Well, we're PJ is going to be our special guest today. Yeah. And uh, so you can, you have a chance with the Zoom. It's so nice because you all have face to face. Um, communication with us. And so you can ask your questions, we can share together, we can see what each other's doing. And I'm going to do a writing assignment, very short writing assignment, but we're going to write and we're going to share as much as we're able to within that hour. So um, it'll be more of uh, a Christmas memory. So uh, it's just an exercise really quick and just to be able to paint a picture in words of a memory. And uh, it's going to be fun. And I love to hear what people write. And there's no tension it's all fun. There's, there's no big critique, criticism or anything within this group. It's all about sharing and just enjoying the process of writing and creativity together as a, as a group. Oh, that's beautiful. So join at 1015, the Zoom link below. If you're in Create Academy, you already have that. But again, if you're not, you can do that. The other thing too is what I do every Christmas. Guys, I've been doing this. I just looked at my stocking. I've been doing this for over 20 three years. All right. So what I do is I write a letter to God and I, I share about what happened during the year, but then I add in, what do I want to see the Lord do? So add in what you wrote. If you decided to take ownership and put that in there, because then what you do, you seal it. And then you say, don't open until Christmas, 2023, put it in your stocking. When you put everything back or all your Christmas stuff, um, it is stored away. And then 12 months later, you get to open that, um, that envelope up and see what God did this pre this last year in your desire to write. So check, so do that too. Uh, it's just fun. I mean, God is so good. I love him. And so, uh, PJ, thank you again for sharing your story. Woo. Get the book, everybody. It will change your life. And PJ, I would love for you just to pray for them. I mean, a lot of them are just starting out. They're wanting to grow at, in, in all different creative forms. So I want you to pray for them right now. Okay. Yes. Father God, I just 
pray for everyone who's watching and those that will watch this later that uh, we just release that um, unconditional love of the Father God, that he is there like in Teresa's painting, just taking your hand and any securities, any shame, any fears you may have, he will gently lead you into more and more of his glorious light and he will show you the way. Father God, we trust you. We thank you for each of these people that have gifts in them. Some of them have, are, have not been tapped into. Some know there's something there. Some already started the process. You know where they are in that process. And we, we trust you to just, um, that you will touch them, show them, lead them, light their path. You're a lamp into their feet and a light into their path. We thank you that you are a good, good father that you will, are showing us the way that you will, the good thing that you have started in, in us, you will bring to completion. And that our story is that uh, spirit of prophecy, that we are there to speak it out and to help others and that God can do it again. What he did in us, that redemptive story he can do in others. And I thank you. I thank you that you wove the beautiful creative arts into my heart to connect with you. This is such a beautiful way and that you bring community, that you bring the Holy Spirit into the process. You bring your presence and your power and, and healing throughout it even. So many things. It's so, so, uh, it's such, it's like a diamond just in the rough, but you are bringing it into this beautiful multifaceted um, jewel that is shining in so many ways. And I just see that in each person's heart right now. Uh, being honed in them. I thank you for uh, Teresa and and Chris for what the gifts that they carry and that we need one another. We need community. And Lord, that's what you did when when Jesus, when you walked the earth, you had community and you helped us to do the hard things. And I love that. They are hard, but they're worth it. And so Lord, give us the courage, give us that warrior heart and that dance to uh, walk through this delicate process, but uh, courageous uh, path that will bring us to that overcoming victory in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, PJ, for joining. And Chris, thank you for leading the focus group. We're so excited. 1015, follow the Zoom, buy that book. And also guys, buy the gift of, of the uh, Ignite conference coming up. I know take a picture or create that and put that in the stocking. It's only $39 for 21 sessions and the prophetic two sessions as well during that day, January 20th. Check it out on TeresaDemon.com slash ignite. Have an incredible Christmas if we don't see you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, PJ. Blessings. Bye, y'all. See you later. Thank you.